Hey everybody, it's Andy. Back in May, my wife and I were visiting Japan and we stumbled upon the Oimatsuri Festival in Kyoto. Pardon my pronunciation. While we were watching a procession go through the city, I noticed a school-aged kid eating a caramel apple with an interesting looking Patagonia backpack on. It had the look of like a full length zipper go all the way down and I hadn't seen it before. Turns out that bag was the newer version of the Patagonia MLC 30 or maximum legal carry on 30 liter size. This is a smaller version of the MLC 45, which is the biggest thing you can fit on an airplane. I decided to pick this bag up and overall it has a lot of features that I really like. In this video, I'm going to talk about the bag, show you all of its features, the modes of carry and the things that I like about it. If you like content like this and want to see more, please smash the like button on YouTube, leave a comment below, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Without further ado, let's talk about the bag. All right, so the MLC30, um, you know, it's a pretty boxy bag. It has a few different materials on the outside, and it comes in a few different colors. This is the black version. First, uh, the front over here, this is like a ripstop nylon um, it's different from their previous MLC bags, which had the shiny, plasticky, waterproof coating on the outside. Uh, now they use a different coating. It's a bit more environmentally friendly, but it doesn't look as weatherproof. It's not as shiny. You do have the Patagonia logo going right down here. Uh, pretty obvious, but overall, it's, it's, it's not subtle. I think it's okay. Some people might not like that. In addition to this material on the front, the sides of the bag are made out of a different material. Uh, this is a bit more of like a rubbery material, and it definitely feels more waterproofy, more like the other bags or the old version. And I think it's kind of nice having this sort of more slidey version on the front, because if you're putting this in an overhead bin or like putting it under the seat in front of you, you're going to want to be able to slide it around. Whereas the rubbery one is nice if it's like standing up like it's not going to move around very much, um, and I think that's pretty good. Looking at the front of the bag, in addition to that logo, you also have these four little attachment points where if you want to like run a, a cable across the front to stick stuff in, you can do that. On this side of the bag, you have a water bottle pocket. This is my 25 ounce camelback chute, uh, the mag chute insulated version, and it fits in the pocket pretty well. It's a very elasticy pocket. You can see how it stretches like that, and the bottle fits in well, though the rubberiness of the material there makes it so it doesn't slide in or out super easily. In addition to the water bottle pocket, there are also three little attachment points on the top and on the bottom of the water bottle pocket. I don't really know what I would put in here. If you have a carabiner, then uh, those would probably fit. Um, or if you wanted to like tie something to the side of the bag, you can do that over here. On the other side of the bag, you have those same three attachment points on the top and the bottom, as well as a handle. And this handle is basically a piece of webbing folded over. It doesn't feel like there's any foam in it, but it's also not like super pointy on the hand. And there's plenty of room if you want to like fit your hand in, if you have a glove or something. Uh, I think that's a pretty effective handle. There are also these two points here where you can attach the shoulder strap, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. The top of the bag has a similar handle to the side over there, and the bottom of the bag has nothing at all, just the solid rubberiness. Looking at the back of the bag, I'm going to talk about, uh, we have this material here. It's like a, a soft foam, kind of squishy, not too squishy, and overall, I haven't found it to be like super breathable, but it's also not super sweat inducing. So that's pretty nice. And those are in two panels going down here. There's also a luggage pass through handle, which is about the same material as the handle on the top of the bottom. It just feels a little bit more stiff over here. Now, the nifty thing about this bag, uh, one of these features is that it's a convertible bag. It can go either as a shoulder carry or as a backpack with traditional straps. You can see here I have the uh, shoulder strap. This comes with the bag, and this is pretty cool. There are two clip points on this side. Uh, these are both just standard clips. And you can unclip this, and then these sort of shimmy in here so that they go out of the way. Meanwhile, the backpack straps just uh, slide over here. And these straps have the same sort of foam on the back as you do right here, so it's consistent there. On the front, they have some attachment points 
over here for the uh, sternum strap. And over on this side, you also have the Patagonia logo over here. They clip in at the bottom with clips that slide into the side here. And these clips are like a different size from these clips. So it's, there's not gonna be like confusion about what fits where. And there you have it in a backpack mode. Now the fun thing is, what do I do with the shoulder strap? Well, there's a little bit of Velcro here. And what you can do is slide this through the same place where I took out the bottoms of the backpack clips. And this then becomes the hip belt. I just uh, padded down that Velcro in the middle, so it's pretty well secure. And now we have a backpack. Let me try this on, show you the fit. Uh, for context, I am about five foot nine and 150 pounds. Uh, hip belt fits. And overall, it's a pretty comfortable backpack. Doesn't feel too huge or too heavy on my back. Looking at the zippers, the back pocket has a reverse coil of the YKK. Um, this isn't the number 10 size. It's probably like a five or an eight. You have a quick access pocket right here, which is a smaller version of the same style zipper. And then the front has a nice beefy YKK number 10. And this is not the reverse coil. This is just the teeth on the outside. None of these have the rubbery style coating, but they do have you know, some amount of weather resistance built in. All right, so that's the exterior of the bag. I'm gonna talk a bit about the pockets now. This bag has one of my favorite features. Um, I've seen this on the Alpha 1.9er Pathfinder, and I haven't had any other bags that have this. And what that feature is, is what I call the office section. Over here in the back, uh, zippers go all the way down on both sides. Um, this back panel unfolds. Over here, there's a, uh, you know, you have your organizer area. I got two pen slots. There's a little keychain loop with a plastic link and a slot over here that goes this deep. Slot over here has some Velcro. It's uh, big enough to fit a Pixel 6. And below here, we have two elastic pockets. I have just a anchor battery power charger thing over here. And then down below, there is a zip pocket, which is big enough to fit an Evergoods Cap 1. On the backside here, it's a dual compartment. There's foam padding here, and then I have just a manila folder. And behind there, with a little Velcro attachment, is the laptop pocket. And it's definitely big enough to fit a 16-inch MacBook Pro. This is just a 14-inch, and it, it fits like all the way down to here. The back pocket for the laptop is suspended. You have at least an inch over here. So if you drop the bag, your laptop is going to be reasonably safe. I really like that let's say I am traveling for work and this is the only bag I bring, I can just go straight to the office, not have to worry about unpacking my clothing or digging through stuff. I can get everything I need to work, the, the cables, the laptop, the pens, the papers, all right here uh, without having to open up the rest of the bag. Anyway, we're reviewing the bag though, so let's go ahead and open up the rest of the bag. Looking over here at the quick access pocket, this is a pretty cavernous pocket right here. Um, I have a Tombin 3D organizer cube, but the pocket goes, like if this is my hand, it goes all the way down to my wrist right here, so pretty deep, and the width of the pocket is pretty wide as well. Uh, you can really fit some serious stuff in this quick access pocket, and I'll show you the other side as we get inside the bag. Looking into the front of the bag now, Clamshell opening goes all the way. You have two pockets on the inner lid. One of them is a mesh pocket. I just have uh, some masks in here, pretty flat. And the bottom one is more opaque. And in here I have uh, just some wrist guards because my arms are old. If you notice, these both open up with zippers on the same side as the bag handle. So if it is in duffel mode, you'll be able to just reach in and grab stuff from there without having to wiggle the bag around a lot. The main compartment over here is pretty spacious. I'm able to fit a medium-sized Peak Design packing cube, a toiletry kit, a Bellroy uh, Venture Light sling, and just a, a beanie hat all in here. And it's just a big open space. This right here is the inside of that quick access pocket, and you can see how big it is. When it's full, it does eat up a bit of volume from the space, but I haven't had any problems with that. 
Another thing that's kind of nifty is if you want to keep everything confined to the main pocket, there is a mesh grid that can pack into this little pouch. Uh, you can see a little pouch right here. And it's just a mesh thing with a zipper that zips across the inside here. So for some reason, you just want to keep this stuff from falling out. Maybe you still want to be able to access over here. You can do that. And the bag lets you either have this as a feature or tuck it away as I did earlier. All right, so pros and cons of the Patagonia MLC 30. In general, I think this bag has a ton of utility. Being able to use it in two modes, having the special office only pocket, have being able to pack up stuff in the front, uh, the large quick access pocket. These are all things that I think are really useful. And that the handles, the luggage pass through strap, a lot of it is just what I would want in a bag. Things that I think could be a little better. First, it is a pretty boxy bag, which is what you're looking for if you want something like this. I kind of wish they had sized it just a little bit smaller so it would be like the perfect dimensions for a Ryanair or a Spirit Airlines sizer bin. As of now, it's a bit too big for that. Um, also, this is, this is kind of a nitpick for me, but if I have the luggage pass-through strap and I have the handle over here, with the water bottle at the bottom, if I have it sitting on some luggage, I can't get that water bottle. I have to lift the bag up. So usually I like a solution where there's a water bottle pocket and the handle next to each other on the one side. You can get the Patagonia MLC 30 for 200 US dollars from either Patagonia's website or a number of retailers. I think I got this one from REI myself. In general, if this is the sort of bag you're looking for, then I think it's a great option. Other similar bags, if you want to consider maybe an upgrade, is take a look at the Alpha 19 or Pathfinder. It offers a similar size bag, the similar office-only section, but it has a few different features and the organization might suit you better than the MLC 30. Overall though, this is definitely a bag that I'm gonna continue using and I look forward to taking it on a weekend trip sometime soon. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you like content like this and wanna see more, please smash the like button on YouTube, leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Thank you all very much for watching and have a good day.